Angel woke up to find a vampire standing in front of him. Angel was about to take out his gun, but accidentally dropped it on the ground. Just then, Gus returned home in time. In order to protect Angel, Gus had no choice but to shoot his own mother. When Gus was a child, his father was often violent at home, and his mother was often beaten severely by his father in order to protect him. Since then, Gus vowed to protect his mother when he grew up, but now he has killed her himself. Gus slowly sat down on the sofa, and tears began to fall uncontrollably, but Gus soon regained his composure because he hadn't killed the blood ancestor yet. On the other side, Abraham and Vasily arrived at the factory owned by Stoneheart Group. They successfully entered using the employee ID cards given by Palmer. Then the two found the captain at the given address and confirmed his identity. Vasily pinned him against the wall. Then he began to ask the captain what was inside the ship, but the captain didn't say anything. So Vasily directly pulled out his gun and prepared to kill him. After seeing the gun, the captain told them that he only knew it was a large wooden crate and actively offered to take them to the place where the crate was stored. Soon the captain took Vasily and the two to a factory. This was the human slaughterhouse built by Eichhorst. Abraham immediately understood what was used for and angrily slapped the captain. The captain said he was forced to do it. If he doesn't do this he will be drained of his blood. As said by countless facilitators of genocide throughout time. Do not speak again if you wish to remain alive. The captain seemed to be somewhat shaken after hearing this. So he led the two to the unloading area. As soon as they arrived, they saw workers loading wooden crates. Abraham immediately shot at them, and the captain accidentally got hit and died on the spot. Then a gunfight broke out between the two sides, and Eichhorst immediately ordered his men to drive away. When they arrived, Eichhorst took the wooden crates and left quickly. It's not that Eichhorst doesn't dare to confront Abraham, but this cargo is too important to be delayed even a little bit. On the other side, Dutch got drunk again. She and F sat on the sofa and chatted. The atmosphere gradually became ambiguous. And then they hugged each other and started kissing passionately. On the other side, Quinlan found the three ancestors. When Quinlan appeared, the ancestors asked him if he didn't say he wouldn't come again. I have a question. Perhaps a warning. We are listening. A few days ago, the master arranged for a piece of cargo from Egypt to arrive here in New York by a ship. And the Lumen recounts an incident some 3,000 years ago in which an army of Egyptians managed to seal one of your kind in a sarcophagus. Is it possible that the cargo that the master has brought here is that very same ancient? The ancients started to discuss after hearing this and confirmed that this was indeed the case. Quinlan then began to analyze. If the blood ancestor cooperates with the ancestors of the old era, then their three ancestors may not be alive for long, and they will launch an attack soon. Therefore, Quinlan suggested that the three ancestors cooperate with Abraham because he knew how to defeat the blood ancestor, but the ancients didn't believe in humans. But just then, a group of vampires surrounded them. The ancestors were very angry, thinking that Quinlan brought them here. Then the blood ancestor took control of Eichhorst's body and began to send messages. He was originally going to get rid of the three ancestors, but he didn't expect that Quinlan was also there. Blood ancestor said that the three of them could have taken over the world, but now they have become a corrupt race. Eichhorst activated the bomb in his suitcase, and the century war began. Quinlan drew his bone sword and charged, finding it easy to deal with these small vampires. The other vampire warriors also started fighting. After placing the bomb on the ground, Eichhorst left the area. Quinlan, with his centuries of training, easily defeated the vampire warriors who were much weaker. The vampire warriors were soon overwhelmed by the enemy's large numbers and were beaten down. The three ancients started to take action after witnessing this. At this moment, Eichhorst emerged from the other end of the passage, ready to detonate the bomb. Quinlan seemed to realize the danger and started moving towards the exit. In no time, a bloody path was carved out. Seeing that Eichhorst was about to detonate the bomb, Quinlan immediately pulled out his gun and eliminated the remaining bloods. After finishing everything, Quinlan immediately ran towards the exit. Just as Quinlan escaped, Eichhorst pressed the button in his hand. And so, the three ancients were forever buried underground. On the other side, Abraham and Palmer met. Abraham hoped that Palmer would use his power to search for the whereabouts of the wooden box. In order to bring down Blood Ancestor, Palmer said he would leave it to him. 
The bloods had already begun to occupy the human safe zone bit by bit, and it wouldn't be long before the city completely fell. Justine still hoped that everyone would hold their ground. At this time, a police officer stepped forward, stating that they were running low on ammunition, this was clearly an unwinnable war. Justine responded by saying that as long as they concentrated all the police forces, they could definitely hold on until F developed something to counter the bloods, but the previous failures had already crushed everyone's morale. As a result, they all resigned and dispersed. Everyone decided to escape from this doomed city. Ever since the three ancestors were buried alive by nuclear bombs, humanity's safe zone has begun to fall. The police all started to evacuate, and this scene happened to be seen by Gus and the two of them. After discussing, Gus and his companion decided to leave the city first. On the other side, F was taking a shower when he noticed something slowly approaching. <laughs> Just then, there was a knocking sound at the door. When F saw that it was Vasily, he opened the door. At that moment, Dutch had just finished washing her hair and walked out. After that, Vasily began to say that the city could no longer be defended, and all government personnel had evacuated. He hoped that F and Dutch would follow him to escape the city. Upon hearing this, F expressed that their research was about to be completed. Retreating at this time would be a waste of their efforts. Seeing that F was unwilling to leave, Vasily tried to persuade Dutch, but Dutch was now F's person, and she also didn't want to leave. Using the unfinished research as an excuse, seeing that they couldn't convince the two, Vasily left disappointedly. In order to complete their research as soon as possible, F and Dutch went to the underground tunnel. They wanted to capture a feeler for research. They hadn't gone far when they were targeted by a feeler. The feeler was fast, and F couldn't aim at it at all. Suddenly, Dutch was accidentally knocked down, and F rushed forward to fight the feeler. The painful feeler immediately distanced itself from the two, and Dutch took the opportunity to throw a net at it. Upon returning, F immediately dissected the feeler. Its sensory system was very powerful, and they could use it to develop a new type of microwave sensor. At this time, only Justine and a few police officers were left in the entire Hongo district. At this time, the director said that he had made contact with the defense zone in Manhattan, and there were still manpower and supplies there. After careful consideration, Justine ultimately decided to abandon the city. So, Justine prepared to leave the city with the remaining five police officers. Soon, they arrived at the entrance of a bridge, but there were long queues of cars ahead, making it impossible for vehicles to pass through. Justine sent two officers to investigate. As everyone anxiously waited, suddenly there was a knocking sound on the door. One team member approached and opened the small window, seeing their teammates, and then opened the door. At the same time, Gus and another person arrived at the bridge by car, and coincidentally witnessed the police officers being surrounded by the bloods. Gus, filled with hatred towards the police, decided to take a detour, however, Angel wanted to rescue them, leading to a heated argument between the two. In the end, Gus agreed to go and rescue them. Meanwhile, Justine and the others were sitting in the car, unsure of what to do. Suddenly, gunshots rang out outside, and within seconds, there was silence. Shortly after, there was a knocking sound on the door, and Gus urged them to quickly come out and escape. With no other options, Justine and the others had to trust Gus. They then began to walk towards the bridge. However, as they passed by a school bus, a female officer accidentally bumped into a backpack, causing it to make noise. A large group of bloods quickly swarmed from all directions, forcing them to fight and retreat. They hurriedly ran towards the car. Justine and several officers found a car to use as cover against the attacking bloods. Gus and Angel went to a higher position, knowing that they would be safe once they passed the iron railing ahead. But just then, a bloods quietly crawled out from under the car. Seizing the opportunity, it bit Angel's leg. And upon seeing this, Gus immediately pulled out his stinger and shot at the bloods. However, it was too late. Angel had already been infected. Gus blamed himself deeply, but Angel urged Gus to leave and promised to cover for him. Gus refused, resulting in an argument between the two. Realizing that time was running out, Angel directly threw Gus down before it was too late. At this moment, the situation was dire for Justine's team as one officer was bitten on the neck. Seeing this, Justine immediately turned around and fired her gun. But unfortunately, a nematode's accidentally splashed onto her face. Soon after, it crawled into Justine's eye. However, in the final moment, she continued to fiercely fight against the Bloods while holding her gun. Angel also faced a massive onslaught from the Bloods, and he arm was bitten as well. 
Seeing that Gus had gone away, Angel broke the car's fuel tank, the leaked gasoline slowly flowed towards the flames. At this point, everyone prepared themselves for what seemed like their last stand. Even though they were covered in injuries, they were determined to fight the bloods until the end. Gus had successfully reached the safe zone, bringing relief to Angel upon seeing this. In this way, Justine and Angel met their demise in the Sea of Fire. On the other side, Palmer obtained the unloading address for the wooden crate and immediately went there with security personnel. However, as soon as they entered the warehouse, they were attacked by a group of people. Palmer's trained security personnel immediately engaged in combat. Soon, they broke into the factory, and within a minute, the enemies were completely eliminated. Then, Palmer entered the factory and forcibly opened the transported wooden crate. When opened, there is a suitcase inside. Under the threat of a pistol, the person in charge could only open the box. To their surprise, it contained a makeshift nuclear bomb. The case also had an empty spot for a suitcase inside. He said there was an explosion in Manhattan yesterday and it must have been done by Eichhorst. The remaining nuclear bomb must be of great importance to the blood ancestor. So Palmer took it away directly. On the other side, F and Dutch had built a new type of microwave sensor to test its effectiveness. They carried the device to a nearby blood's lair. Just then, several bloods sensed their presence and approached. F quickly drew his gun to prevent any danger. Then, Dutch activated the device. As expected, these bloods were immobilized and remained motionless. F fired his gun, and the other bloods didn't react at all. It seems that the microwave sensor has been successfully developed. 